Welcome back to the Boondocks Homestead. Hey, don't go nowhere. We got something really good coming up. Hey, today we're going to make something really good. Um, I thought about this for uh, Thanksgiving Day. If you're fixing a big dinner, um, we always want stuffing, right? Or dressing, however you want to put it. Um, I've always called it stuffing since I was a little girl because mom usually stuffed it in the bird. But we don't do that too much anymore. Some people, a lot of people still do probably, but um, there's a lot that don't do it either. But anyways, um, I'm going to do a half of my recipe with you today because it's just Tim and I. Um, and I'm also going to change it up a little bit, but I'm going to put the recipe um, how it would be if you were to make it underneath this video. So make sure you check that out after the video. I'm only changing a couple of things. The first thing I'm changing is, and a lot of you won't have this, but I do have it on the shelf, so I want to use it up. When I first started doing sourdough, I had, I had several loaves that wouldn't rise or anything, but I didn't throw them away. I crumbled them up and put them in a tray in a pan, a big pan, and I just set them in the pantry and I would let them dry out for four or five days. When they were dried, I would put them in a mason jar, label them, and then I'd make them airtight. Okay, I'd seal them, vacuum seal them, and make them airtight. Hear that? They're dry as they can be. <laughs> so these are sourdough breadcrumbs. You may use regular breadcrumbs. And if you don't have any um, regular breadcrumbs, just get you a loaf of bread, open it up, and or make you a loaf <laughs> that'd be even better um open, crumble it up put it in a pan and dry it out you can also put it in an oven to dry it out you know you don't want to uh cook it too long and burn it but you can do that too but i just like laying it out and i can forget about it and then go back in a few days and it's ready okay the other thing i'm going to change is normally you would put the you would put turkey or chicken in your dressing right well today i'm going to put some of my deer sausage that I made uh, several months ago. And so I'm going to show you how to do it with deer sausage, but it won't be any different. If you have got turkey or you have chicken, you would just kind of do it the same way and I'll go through it with you. Okay. So we're going to have chicken broth and I have my liquid gold. This is every time we do our roosters, we're getting ready to do our roosters again, again here in a few days. Um, and I make bone broth out of them. And I call it rooster broth, and I also call it liquid gold. I've called it that for years because that's what it is. I don't have to buy this from the store, okay? I've done this for several years, and um, this is my liquid gold. So there's my broth, and we're gonna. I've got two stalks of celery. Of course, if you double this recipe, you'd have four, but we're gonna do two today. I've got my nuts and my, my pecans and my cranberries, dried cranberries. Now this. I want to go over this with you real quick. And we also got a half of a yellow onion, but I had white. I had white already cut up in the fridge, so you know what I used. I wasn't going to cut another onion just because of the color. I'm using white, and it'll work out just fine. Okay, so then I've got my sage. I've got my um, sage leaves. And I'll tell you what I did. I'll be honest. I didn't think I had any sage growing outside. So I went by the store after I got off the bus and I bought a little jar of dried ground sage, which is what you can use if you don't have any. And when I got home, I'm like, well, maybe I do have some of that out there. And I did. I had it in the hoop house growing. So I got me some leaves off of there and I um, crushed them up and I'm going to use three sages. And then I've got rosemary. This one's rosemary. And I think it's a tablespoon of that. And then a half a tablespoon of the thyme. Dry, uh, it's not dried. It's fresh. All this is fresh. I just went and picked it out of the garden, out of the hoop house garden. And I didn't have any regular thyme. All I had growing was lemon thyme. And you know what? I'm going to use it. And I may ruin my whole dish, but I'm going to use it anyway and, and see what it tastes like. But I... it. It smells basically the same. So I just can't, you know, and if it has a little lemon in it, well, so be it. I think that would probably be good. So anyway, we're going to try that. But I'm going to put the real recipe, okay? I'm always doing this, jumbling stuff up and doing what I want to do. I've always done that. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. So 
I'm going to get the camera down here and show you. We're going to start here on the stove. I'll finish up here, then we'll go to the oven, okay? So stick around and don't go nowhere because you're going to want to see this. This is going to be so good. All right, guys, we're down here at the stove. I've got my sausage, my homemade deer sausage in here. This has got pork and venison in it, okay? Now, it's a little bit dry on the dry side, even though I put some pork in it. So I'm going to put a little bit of this grapeseed oil in here. Just a little bit to kind of keep it from sticking to my cast iron pan. Okay. And we're going to cook this up with two stalks of celery. But if you're doubling this, which you probably would be unless it's just two people for, for this like it is for us. And a fourth of an onion. Okay. And now you're going to cook this in here until this is tender and the meat is done. And I'm not going to keep you on here with me. I'm going to turn that heat up a little bit and I'm going to get this going. Okay. And then I will get right back with you when this is done. All right, guys, this is done. Okay. The meat's done and the onions are translucent and we're good to go here. So we're going to put our herbs in here. Now, again, I have fresh ones. You can use dried. You don't have to have fresh, okay? So we're going to put that in there. That was my rosemary, I think. No, that was my... I'm not sure. This is a sage. Now we're going to put this in here, and this is the thyme. So the other one was my rosemary. Okay, so we're going to put this in here until it becomes fragrant, okay? So I can really smell it, and I really smell it. Oh, that smells so good. Okay, now we're going to take it off. I'm going to take it off the thing, the burner, okay? And we're going to set it to the side. Now let me get you back up on the thing. Hold on. I forgot, guys. we got to put some salt and pepper in here. And just do this to taste, okay? So I probably just put half a teaspoon of pepper and I'm going to put about probably a little over half a teaspoon of salt and then just stir that up in there okay and then set it to the side I almost forgot about the salt and pepper we could have added it later it would not have been a big deal okay hold on all right we've got the meat done and the vegetables and the herbs um, so now what we're going to do is, and I forgot to tell you a while ago, cause this was in the microwave. I was melting it. The quarter stick of butter. We're going to use that too. Okay. And the eggs. Now I'm going to use, I was going to use three of my really small eggs because it calls for three large eggs and I'm making half of this recipe. So I was going to use my little ones and I'd only had one little one. So I'm going to use a medium one and a little one to maybe make up for the three. For my recipe okay i don't mean to confuse you i'm sorry if i do and i'm i'm going to put the real recipe underneath this video but just bear with me because i think this is going to be super good and you know me i just try, i go as, as i go i i use what i have <laughs> and that's what i always try to teach you guys use what you have it's not going to make a huge difference okay so um I also forgot to tell you to preheat your oven at 350 because we're going to put this in the oven here in a minute. All right, so the next step is we're going to take our sausage and, and our vegetables and our herbs and we're going to put it in our breadcrumbs. We're just going to pour it on top of our breadcrumbs, okay? That smells so good, you guys. But if you've got used dried, dried's going to smell good too. I mean, it just is. Okay, then, I don't know if you can see that. I put that right on top of the breadcrumbs. I'm going to take my nuts and my cranberries, my dried cranberries. And I use pecans. I reckon you could use walnuts if you want or whatever kind of nuts you want to. Okay, so I'm just going to pour them on top. Now, I'm going to mix my egg into my broth. Okay, I'm not going to scrape all that out because I think I've got probably a little bit too much anyways. Now we're going to do this, I'll pour it in here a little bit at a time because we want to make sure that all these breadcrumbs are soaked up in it, okay? We don't want any dry spots. Put that to the side. 
So we're going to go a little bit like that, and then we're going to stir it. And it may take you a little longer, but you want to get all that coated. And you don't want it like drenching wet. That's another reason you want to do it this way. You don't want to have like a bunch of wet, wet breadcrumbs and then you have some that aren't. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Go again. Now this is our egg and our broth, our liquid gold. Okay. If you don't have this, go buy it at the store. They've got it. They got it in a can. They got it in a carton. I like buying it in a carton when I don't have it. And we didn't. Before we had chickens, I bought it from the store, you guys. You make do. That's just that's the whole thing. You, you just have to make do. I just dropped a red crumb. We're going to throw him back in there. We don't want to lose him. Okay. We're all coated. It's all coated in here. See all that? Now we're going to take this butter. I'm going to get me a little thing here. And we're going to pour this butter over top of it, okay? I want to get all that out. Okay, now, next step. I'm going to grab me a little spray here. And I'm going to put it right in this. I don't want it sticking. Don't want it to stick. And we're going to pour this in your pan and your whatever you got to put it in. Boy, I'm just making all kinds of messes. But I think I'm going to put this in two pans because I don't want it real deep. And that's pretty, well, that's pretty deep, y'all. For me. Let's put a little bit more in and see what it looks like. I can always take it out, right? You know what? I think it'll be okay. I think it's going to be okay. We're not going to fuss with it and dirty up two dishes, are we? Mm -mm. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of get that in there like that. That looks so good. Goodness, I love stuffing. I love anything that contains bread. I'm just going to tell you. Bread is my weakness. And when they diagnosed Tim and I as being pre-diabetic when we were 25 pounds heavier, um... <laughs> I got on this sourdough kick and um, because sourdough doesn't raise your blood sugar. It doesn't spike your blood sugar when you eat it. That's what it is. Do your research on that. I'm not a doctor. Uh, but it has worked for us, okay? It's done us good. So anyway, I can have my bread now still. I'm going to put this in a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes covered with tin foil, or if you got a lid or whatever, okay? We're gonna take, in 30 minutes, we're gonna take this off and we're gonna go another 20 minutes or until it's, you know, it looks done. But we want it good and brown on top, okay? So that's what we're gonna do when it comes out. Um, and I think it's a total of like 50 minutes, but we'll see how it goes. It may be different in this pan. Who knows, you know how it goes when you're cooking. Stuff in everyone's oven's different too, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna put this in here. When it's done, I will get back with you. Don't go nowhere. All right, guys, it's been 30 minutes. We're gonna open this up. Gonna take this off. We're gonna take a look at it. Ooh, it's soft. That looks really good. Okay. Now we're going to cook it 20 minutes uncovered at 350. Okay, so I'm going to put this back in the oven and let it cook another 20 minutes and we'll check it. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. That looked good. Okay, let's put it back in. All right, we got it out of the oven. It looks really good. Pretty. I haven't tasted it yet. I'm going to taste it for you. Now this was with deer breakfast sausage. That's what I used. It smells good. It smells amazing. It's got a, it's kind of a baked, you know, got that baked 
crunchy on top and then when you dig down in it it's soft and moist okay let's see how it tastes oh it's hot i just pulled it out of the oven <laughs> the sun's out today you guys it's been raining here for two days and the sun's finally come out i love it okay let's try it Ooh, hot That's really good with the cranberries and the the fresh herbs. You can taste them. That's good. I haven't got a nut yet. I'm want, <laughs> I was wanting to bite into a pecan. I haven't got one yet. That's really good, you guys. But you know what? If you don't have sourdough crumbs, use regular because this would be good with regular breadcrumbs too. And those cranberries, that little bit of sweet just kicks it off okay all right well i'm gonna get off here that was fun all right there you go there you have it lord willing i'll see you in the next video bye